Okay, so today on Relax Melt, I wanted to talk about uh, what do you need to do to get yourself ready for uh, for your camping trip. As uh, today being uh, uh, Memorial Day, the summer has officially kicked off, and so it is time for us to start getting ourselves ready uh, for the uh, for the camping season. If you haven't yet, which if you haven't, what's wrong with you? Come on, well, let's get out there, let's get camping, let's get outdoors, get in contact with the earth because it's fun and it's nice and well, you get some beautiful scenery, and uh, I'm here in uh, in the wonderful my my personal paradise, my happy spot, uh, Pottsville, Texas, and uh, just uh, going to be camping out tonight by the uh, Cowhouse Creek. So uh, you're, that's the uh, that's the noise of the water that you're hearing in the background. So anyhow, let's get ourselves started. Uh, so if I'm going to go ahead and just choose use one item, and today I wanted to just basically talk about. When getting yourself, when prepare, get yourself ready, uh, before you head out, you always want to make sure that you have all your needed equipment. Um, something that is good to good to actually do is to go through and verify you've got you didn't leave some you know stakes behind and you were tell you told yourself oh, I'm going to buy some later. Um, a good thing to do is to actually have a checklist and. Uh, take an inventory at the end of the summer and uh, and at the beginning of the summer that way you're able every time right before you go out to your uh, out on a camping trip you're actually able to go through and go all right see I still have uh, all you know 15 tent stakes that I'm going to be needing and uh, I've got uh, you know all all the cooking mix that I need uh, I've got uh, you know I've got uh, Oh shoot! I don't know. You got, you know, you got your wooden mallet. Check. You need. You got, got your shovel. Check. You got all the other items that you're going to need. Now, granted, I am maybe 200 foot from my from my uh, granddad's house, um, and uh, just wanted to go down and camp. So I'm not. I didn't bring a whole lot to go camping with. I've got uh, my mat. I've got a blanket. I've got uh, the pillow, and uh, that's basically all. I am. I uh, didn't even bring the sleeping bag just because, well, nights here get down about 70 degrees, so it's sleeping bag is, is heavier than what it really needs to be. So, but anyhow, one of, one of the things you want to check is with your tent. And one of the, one way I highly recommend you check your tent is to go ahead and actually unroll it. Check it out. Make sure that you are, you're set. Because you know you might you're gonna check several different items that are that are on it. So let's get her started. Okay. Now, when it comes to checking your tent, yeah, I mean, obviously you want to make sure that you have everything that you need. Tent stakes. Which should have all your tent stakes available. Then you also want to double check. Make sure, check the conditions of your poles, because nothing worse is to come out here and find out that you had a had a uh, an elastic snap on on your pole. So, like for me, I am using the Wenzel uh, Blue Ridge, which is a lot more tent than I really need. But you know what? I've used my I've used my little three-person tent a couple times. It's time to break out the old. Uh, break out the big boy and enjoy it and it's not like I have to use it's not just up to me to or it's up to me to warm it up so don't need to have excess so looking at the uh, looking at each of the poles I can see that the uh, the shock cord the stretching the, the elastic in there is all good I'm not seeing any splits I'm not seeing anything that is that could uh, potentially co cause a problem with the uh, with the tent so we got four sets of uh, four sets of poles there's the third set and here's the last set and we look through here and it looks good now if you have like dividing rooms or things like that 
you want to look and see, like here, somehow I've got a little bit of Oklahoma mud plastered on the side of, uh, side of one of the walls. Um, so, but you want to go ahead and check it over. Make sure that your your zipper is good, strong. Make sure it hadn't decided to split somewhere along the way. Make sure check out your seams. Look the seams over real decently. That way you make sure that your seam you're not you know not going to have a have a problem. Are you getting cases of uh, dry rot on any of your uh, on any of your hooks that may have be elastic? Because uh, that's always an issue that could pop up if it looks good to you. All right, you can set it off to the side. Uh, Rainfly. Also, again, you want to make sure look through here. Make sure your guide lines are good. See, that's really weird. I've got some fraying happening right here. I don't know if that's something. I don't know why that's frayed like that, but. Uh, Yet, to, yet it is. It's got. I don't know why there would be uh, that much uh, internal fabric sticking out, but uh, there is on that. Uh, again, look at the corners. You've got shock cords. Make sure they're all good, elastic, and, and rubbery like they're supposed to be. Uh, more guideline. Uh, this one here looks good. Another shock cord. Looks good. Now I'm not really going to worry that much about my uh, about my rain fly because I'm not expecting rain today. But you still want to go through and look at it and don't dismiss the uh, the ever present chance of a surprise uh, rainstorm coming up. So you also want to use a rain fly in case it gets uh, a little too windy because. For the Wenzel, that's where your that's where your guidelines are. They they're attached to the uh, to the rain fly. So now you're to the actual tent itself. So again, you want to when you lay it, get it all laid out and stuff. You want to make sure that you're actually not that there are not any wear spaces because you're going to get creases uh, where everything's been rolled up and pressed down. And if you leave a leave a tent packed up for a very long time, those creases get Creased is the best way to say it. So they get mashed flatter and flatter to where that becomes a very weak spot in the material. And so one day, if you're not constantly fluffing it out, bring, making sure everything's good, you're going to end up having a fold that eventually tears. Uh, a lot of people who have uh, who have uh, a, a, a quilt uh, know that a proper way to care for a quilt is you actually uh, about every couple months, you unfold it, you fluff it out, and you refold it the opposite direction. Why? Because you don't want the you don't want the fabric to develop a memory and to crease in that same spot. You want it to maintain the flexibility that you want that uh, that is in that quilt. Because if you don't, that's where a hole's going to form. So let's go ahead. Um, since I am going to be So again, make sure your feet are all good. You've got uh, everything looks like it's good, secure. You're not getting any fray on your on your stitchings. So we are looking all good on this side. Not good here, here. So we are on this side again, looking good. And going down again, look, make sure. Everything looks the way it should be. Now once you have everything up and out, uh, again, you want to start looking at uh, the netting, making sure that there's not any excess, any holes or anything like that. And the best way to do that is actually go ahead and just put it up, uh, which is what we're going to do today. Because uh, this, this is pretty much where I'm going to uh, camp. I may move it just a little bit just so that we can get ourselves a better flat area. So, uh, but you want to look through 
as you've got to have everything undone, make sure look through your uh, at your netting because that's highly important. Unless you like to have bugs fly in uh, and, and feast on you while you are out cold. So we have got a lot of grass in here. It's great, there's a lot. <laughs> so yeah, everything here looks good, um, and so I'm not. I don't think there's going to be any issues or any problems with whenever I go to set this up. Uh, if you do this early enough in the year and you go through and inspect, then you can tell, hey, I need to work on the stitching on like if a, if a steam's coming, seam's coming loose, you can look through there and go, okay, yeah, I need to be able to stitch that. You pass that up. If there's a, a hole in the, uh, some of the uh, bug screen, you can get that all patched together and, and repaired. And, uh, or if there's something like a big giant rip, say you loaned it out to your best friend Fred and Fred ruined it, uh, you can, uh, you've got plenty of time to uh, go and knock on Fred's door and, you know, have him pitch in to, for a new tent, which is good. New tents are always nice. So, but anyhow, that is with uh, how you want to actually go through and look for uh, prep for your, your tent for for the first day of the season. Uh, your sleeping bag's a lot like the same. Uh, you want to unroll it, make sure it's uh, good. If you use a, uh, a sleeping bag liner, you know, you should have that thing been washed a long time ago, but if for whatever reason you didn't, you want to wash it. If uh, I've been playing around all day, so if you see me scratching a lot, that's because I have actually, I have found a couple of chigger nests. So <laughs> I've got some Texas chiggers. Uh, and they are so bam <laughs> so with a sleeping bag again you want to make sure that you, you never want to pack a seat, uh, sleeping bag up uh, anyhow you don't want to store it when it's packed up I actually keep mine in a chest it folds up gets stuffed in the uh, in the chest and it that's where it stays uh, unless I'm ready for it and then I'll bring it out roll it up and we're good to go um, but whenever you're getting prepared during the season and you unroll it and you open it up, look at it, make sure that you have, uh, you're not, you don't have any rips in the, in, on the shell, there's no worn spots in the liner, Just give it a good smell, make sure it doesn't smell like, uh, like a, you know, like a 50 year old uh, vagrant's been sleeping in it, you know, make sure that it's all good, if it needs to be washed, if there's stains on it, then go ahead and get it washed, it's not, not that the stains will come out, but at the same time, at least you know that it's clean. Um, you also are able to go through your checklist and you can see, hey, I've got enough uh, points for, I've got enough, uh, like I said, double check, make sure your wooden mallet's good. Uh, make sure that you're, uh, you've got all your kitchen items uh, and make sure your stove's good. You check and see how much, uh, uh, whether you have enough, uh, fuel for the uh, for the kitchen stove if not then uh, you'll need you know you can build up a list and you can make sure that you have everything that you're going to need for your camping trip and if you have a check a, a, a list a list giving out the uh, giving out your your uh, your inventory for for your for your camping trip then you are your your set you 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 know that whenever you get to location where you're going to be camping you uh, when you get to your base camp you've already got everything set you, everything's together you aren't going to be hit with a surprise of oh I don't have any cooking utensils or I don't have any paper plates I don't where'd my cooler go you know you're probably going to remember the cooler but still you know what I mean so anyhow that's what you got uh, that's how you get yourself started re uh, and ready by double checking the essentials with your camping gear make sure your camping kit is as complete and ready to go so anyhow I'm Brian Rocksmill you have a great rest of the week and we will talk to you next time